All right, let's start with this skull. And I, in this uh, small session, I am just going to focus on the osteology, the bony elements of the cranium or the skull. So the cranium has been divided into, I'm like, I'm holding a, 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 an artificial model of the cranium in my hand, and I hope that it is pretty much uh, visible for you. Um, so uh, I, some of the bones I have color coded just to give you the idea. So let's just start uh, down with this classification. So the cranium is basically composed of uh, two regions. The top part of the cranium, which has a skull cap, which is intact, uh, and it's enclosing, it is uh, topping up uh, the cavity of the cranium. This whole upper region is known as the neurocranium, which is responsible for housing the brain, its coverings, the blood vessels which are supplying the brain, the veins which are draining the brain tissue, and the brain stem. Okay, so that is why it is known as the neurocranium. Then the lower part, the lower visible region of the cranium is known as the viscerocranium. And why we call it the viscerocranium? Because as you can see, there are openings, uh, like for example, I'm pointing out at the two orbital, a pair of orbital openings or orbital cavities. Then there is a central aperture, which is being divided by, with the help of a septum, and that is known as the nasal cavity. And then we have something which is sandwiched between the, the cranium and the lower jaw, and that is known as the oral cavity. So if I remove the lower jaw, which is pretty much a removable piece of bone, because it, is, it doesn't make a joint which is immobile, it, and it develops like embryonically, this lower jaw, which is also known as the mandible in clinical terms, is developing on its own along with the skull. So if I remove the lower jaw, the cranium is being divided into a lower portion, which is known as the viscerocranium, and an upper portion, which is known as the neurocranium. The function of the, neuro, uh, the, of the viscerocranium, why we call it the viscerocranium, because it is holding and it is protecting certain organs of the special senses. And organs are also known as viscera or viscous. Okay, so the, as for example, the orbital cavities are holding or they are protecting the eyeballs, which are the, uh, the, um, the organ of vision. The nasal aperture or the nasal cavity is holding the olfactory bulbs, which are the special sensory organs for the sense of the smell or olfaction. Then if we put the mandible in place, it is creating, I'm sorry, it is like, like this. It is holding or it is, it's enclosing the oral cavity, right? The oral cavity is having another organ of a special sensory, sensation, uh, sense, um, a special senses that is known as the tongue. Because the tongue is lined with the special taste buds which are responsible for the perception or perceiving of this, uh, the, the sense of gustation of taste, okay? So that is why, because these special sensory organs are located and they are housed within the facial skeleton, so we call it the viscerocranium, all right? Among all these bones, usually uh, it's been mentioned that there are altogether 22 paired and unpaired bones making the cranium or the skull. All of these bones are joining each other at immobile joints, and they are known as a special sutural joints, which are, you won't find the sutural joints anywhere in the body, except for the cranium. And these joints are completely immobile. You cannot separate these bones. You cannot move these bones at any point of time in life, okay? But this is not the case with the lower jaw. The lower jaw, 
or mandible is a detachable bone because it, it is making a joint with the temporal bone, which is a part of the cranium. It's making a joint with the temporal bone. And that joint is, joint is known as a synovial variety of joint that is known as the temporomandibular joint or TMJ. Okay. All right. So enough about the general description. Now, anatomically, in most of the anatomy atlases and books, it has been mentioned like they, they describe the cranium at different views. And these views are also at times known as normas. Okay. So we can observe the cranium from the top. So that, that view is known as norma verticalis. We'll talk about it. Then we can view the skull from the side. That view is known as norma lateralis. Then we can view the, the skull or the cranium from the front or anteriorly. And that is known as norma frontalis. Then we can also view the cranium from behind, from the back. And the back, the, the, the most prominent bone, which is making the back part of the cranium, is known as occipital bone. So we can also call this view as the norma occipitalis. Okay. Then there is a fifth view, which is really very important because that view is having most of the openings for the structures to get into the cranial cavity or get out of the cranial cavity. And we call this this view as the norma basalis or inferior view or the basal view of the, of the cranium okay so norma basalis what you, you must have noticed that i have removed the the mandible because mandible is a detachable bone it is not included in the cranium it is actually articulating with the cranium to complete the facial structure that is the only purpose of mandible other than it is the most important bone for the dentist which we are not discussing at the moment all right so i just have told you that the skull has been classified has been viewed from four from five angles norma verticalis will show certain bones norma lateralis will show another set of bones Norma frontalis will show a set of bones which is different. Norma occipitalis will show another set of bones. And then norma basalis will show most of the foramina or the openings along with the structure which is making the roof of our mouth or the oral cavity that is known as the heart palate. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to start elaborating or talking about the details of each norma. Okay, so stay tuned. Thank you.